going on? How y'all doing out there? It's me, your homegirl, Ladosha Wright. I got my book upside down. <laughs> the author of Curly Hair Adventures and What They Don't Tell You at the Hair Salon. And of course, I have an ebook. It's free on my uh, Global Hair Care Patreon page. And it is called The Beauty and Barber Survival Plan. Surviving Pandemics, Wars, and Crises. And that book is absolutely free to, you know, my licensed professionals out here. We kind of put it together. It actually was a collaborative effort of hairstylists and barbers trying to make it through the pandemic. So uh, that's free on my Global Hair Care Patreon page, all right? So today, uh, as a matter of fact, I'm going to be going live. I was talking to my dear, dear friend this morning. Her name is Susan Paul Dotson. And she is a historian out of the Indiana Historical Society. And so we were talking about like presentations and all this cool stuff. And so she was telling me that she did a presentation and it was called Lunch and Learn. And I was like, hey, I think I could do that. So what I'm going to do is uh, at noon, uh, on certain days, it depends on how my schedule is going, I'm going to do a lunch and learn, but it's going to be specifically uh, out of chapters of my book, What They Don't Tell You at the Hair Salon. So I guess you could say this is going to be a cool way that I'm going to be promoting my book, okay, or my books, because I have three books now, okay? And so uh, I'm going to tell you a little bit about my book, What They Don't Tell You at the Hair Salon. This is a self help book. That's the genre that it falls up under and it's really to help both the cosmetologist and the customer understand things that really are not talked about overtly or popularly at a hair salon. So it's going to help with communication, um, it's definitely going to help with understanding and then hopefully it will inspire you to write some stuff too, okay? Because I don't know everything. And then of course some stuff in this book has changed since I wrote it. So I'm actually going to be meeting with someone to work on a second edition. How's that? So I'm going to be doing several editions of what they don't tell you at the hair salon because there's so many topics, so many things. So today we are going to be talking about hair coloring, gray hair in specific. So we're going to talk about gray hair uh, particularly because coloring gray hair is one of those topics that people are just always like, you know, really concerned about, or they're always complaining about gray hair, just either not coloring or they're not getting the coverage. So, uh, and now this topic is covered in chapter 10 in my book, all right? And so the name of the chapter is hair color, the good, the bad, and the ugly. So you have all three that kind of goes down. So at the beginning of the chapter, it starts off with a typical phone call that we get when people call the salon and about hair color. And so that phone call, uh, it generally goes that people are calling to inquire about color, but they're concerned about number one, the safety of color, and then number two, uh, they're also concerned with can this color cover my gray? So I want to first share with you that number one, uh, hair coloring is safe here in the United States. And as a matter of fact, in various parts of the world, hair coloring is very, very safe. Now, some people have allergies and they can be allergic to certain ingredients uh, and artificial and organic color. So either or, people can have allergies. So if you have skin allergies or you're sensitive, you know, you have scent allergies, you know, things of that nature, please make sure you let the stylist know before they service you. So when you book the appointment, you know, make sure that you let them know so that they can prepare and let you know if they can service you or not. Because nothing's worse than arriving to the appointment and you start telling them all this stuff and they're like, really lady, really dude, why didn't you tell me beforehand? So I'll go ahead on and be forthright. So that's number one, okay? Uh, number two, always, 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 always go to the hair salon with clean hair when you're gonna get any chemical service, but you should make sure that your hair is clean. So remember, um, uh, this is the Lunch and Learn 
series. I'm going to be doing these impromptu, particularly between 12 and 1 o'clock, all right? And so some people have evening lunches. I might even do one towards the evening. So, and it's all going to be to promote my book. And today we are talking about covering gray hair and the safety of color. And this is straight out of my book, What They Don't Tell You at the Hair Salon. And this is in chapter 10, The Good, The Bad, The Ugly of Hair Care, I mean of Hair Color. And so a lot of people, you know, they come to the hair salon and they don't know that the hair has to be clean because they're not used to getting their hair colored. And then maybe from a professional standpoint, they're not used to a professional color service. So all colorists are requiring or asking in a very nice way that you arrive with the hair clean. So clean is defined as hair that has no flakes. You don't want to have a lot of product build up you know, gels and resins and, you know, butters and bombs and hair greases and oils because those will impede the hair's ability to absorb and for the color molecules to deposit or and lift on the hair, even if you're gonna lighten your hair. So let's make sure that you are arriving to the salon with your hair clean, number one. Number two, again, make sure that you're letting the stylist know before they service you if you have any skin allergies or scent allergies so you're not wasting your time or the stylist's time and nobody wants a faux pas. Now, you gotta understand if you don't know that you're allergic, sometimes you'll find out when you put it on the skin so uh, that's not the stylist's fault. Some people do develop allergies. Like I did not used to be allergic to pineapples, but about two years ago, I became aggressively allergic to pineapples in the worst kind of way. So allergies do happen. So make sure you clear that up first and foremost, all right? So then like I said, number two, or I had it out of order. Number two, make sure the hair is clean. Now, when it comes to the safety of color, so again, you're gonna find this in my book, What They Don't Tell You at the Hair Salon. And I'm making all of this user friendly. Now this is not to replace education. So if you want in-depth knowledge about hair coloring, then you definitely want to partner with the company. My favorite ones are from Misi. I like Schwarzkopf. I definitely like Matrix. Um, and I, I've just got uh, uh, um, Guy Tang. I just started off with Guy Tang. So I'm getting mixed reviews, but I'm having outstanding results with Guy Tang, okay? So just find a company that you can partner with and then they will help teach you and educate you, all right? So the concern about the safety of color, hair color is very safe, but you have about five different types of coloring options. So number one, you have what we call a temporary color. You can find those in your shampoos, your conditioners, and they don't really color the hair, they like stain the hair, or they can be used to enhance, or maybe refine an unwanted pigment. That's number one. Then number two, you have what we call your semi. You guys call them rinses. So um, rinses, they do the same thing that a temporary color does, except the molecules, they are larger and they stick a little bit better, and they don't require a developer. Not good for gray hair, I repeat. Semi-permanent colors are not good for gray hair because they don't cover. Now, if you want to take this white hair and make it pink, well, maybe, but don't try to make your hair brown like this using a semi-permanent color because you're not going to have the, re the best results, even if your hair is relaxed, okay? Uh, number three, you have your Demi. Now, Demi permanent colors have a developer and they kind of swell the cuticle a little. They have a little bit more stain power and you can get great coverage with the Demi. But the temporary, the semi, and the Demi does not lift. So if you want brighter color, then you've got to understand that those three types of color does not lift. So if you have black hair, dark brown hair, or medium brown, and you want to see like red copper like this, or red violet, or gold, or you're going to have to lift. So temporary, your uh, uh, semi and your demi does not lift. They only deposit, and only the demi will cover the gray. And again, I'm promoting my book, What They Don't Tell You at the Hair Salon. 
I will. And this book is available on my website at lwrightbooks.com or you can catch me on Amazon, all right? Um, and that's at my Amazon store, LaDosha Wright. What's up, Brown Sugar? How you doing, uh, Maverick Just Relax Salon? That's really dope. I'm loving that name. So I got a, a salon in the house. I really appreciate that. So if you feel me, you know, go on and hit that little heart button because you know what I'm talking about, okay? And then your fourth type of color is going to be your permanent. So permanent color gets a bad rap like relaxers. People, all the permanent color messed up my hair. All the permanent color. Listen, guys, the color works with oxygen and artificial color molecules. That's it in a nutshell. You'll get more of that when you get my book, okay? So you've got to understand how color works chemically. And a lot of times there's a, uh, you know, there's a mindset or uh, that, you know, color is like, or like colorists are like dingy people and, you know, cosmetologists are just like the people, you know, they couldn't go to college, you know what I'm saying? Uh, none of these things are true. So there's a lot of science and uh, there's a lot of steps and processes to coloring. But best believe permanent hair coloring is very safe. It will not damage your hair, but the hair has to be clean when you arrive and in good condition. Most professional colorists will do a consultation before to let you know if you're a good candidate for what you're looking for. So lower your expectations before you arrive to the salon, especially if you've never had your hair colored professionally before or if this is a new colorist. So let's go in and let's be ready to work together. And this book is a good book to help you get there, all right? So number five, people think it's colored, but it's not, and that's called blonding. So technically, blonding or highlighting is color removal because you're lifting the color out of the hair. Again, you guys call it bleaching. Uh, we call it, uh, you know, blonding or lightening or color removal or depigmentation. So the, that process is going to remove color and then you'll deposit on another color using what? You've got it, a temporary, a semi, or a demi to give you your desired final tone. Now, I am a Fermisi certified master colorist. I have spent approximately, you know, 20, no, maybe like 17 years um, as a colorist. And out of those 17 years, 11 of the, no, no, 12 of them was in strict training. So before I even entertained becoming a master colorist, I really had to go through a lot and I started off my education with Swarovskoff and I really had the blessed opportunity to work under uh, the tutelage of the late great legendary Olive Benson who's responsible for pioneering the advancement of coloring so that people with uh, textured hair can get their hair colored safely. A lot of people don't know that but it is Black History Month, so I thought I might just, yeah, no, pop my home girl up. May she rest in peace. So you guys Google Olive Benson and you will be impressed. She has a career that I can't even compare to, but I'm just saying. Um, so she is the person who introduced me and required that I level up my professionalism and become educated and to become a master colorist because the beauty industry was kind of low. And this was in the early, you know, late, early 2000s, you didn't see a lot of African-American master colorists on the playing field here in the industry. Now we're all over the place, but during that time, it was rare. So I spent 10 years before I was actually ready to take the plunge and make more investment. And it, it's, it's costly to become a master colorist, but you know what? It's worth it because I can write books like this. So now we understand that you have five different types of color. When it comes to coloring or covering gray hair, what they don't tell you at the hair salon is that um, um, gray hair is a disorder. Now to those of you who have just joined us, again, we got a few minutes left uh, on my little mini series called Lunch and Learn with LaDosha. And today we're talking about, you know, covering gray hair, coloring hair. So gray hair is a disorder. It is not, you know, uh, you don't, you know, it's not like regular colored hair. So people have to understand that there are two ways 
that you can be, you know, come gray. So number one, you can have a genetic assignment, which obviously I do. Or two, you can have a medical uh, influence or some type of traumatic experience uh, with your health and the hair can sometimes grow in gray as a result of medications, you know, nutritional changes, things of that nature. So those are the two ways that your hair can become gray. Of course, the last way is that you could just, you know, attempt platinum blonde hair, all right? Um, so now we understand that gray hair is a disorder. Then number two, it is imperative that you only use a color that's formulated to do what? Cover your gray hair. When people say to me, my hair won't color, my gray hair won't color, or every time I look around, the color isn't quote unquote taking. It doesn't last long. Now last long speaks to the hair growing out. Not taking speaks to the color not being formulated properly. So you have to formulate, and in that formulation, it comes with using a product line that says it's for 100%, 70%, or whatever percentage of gray coverage. Now, if you're a licensed professional, you will have to partner with a professional company to make that education, you know, understandable, all right? So you gotta understand that if you're shopping over the counter, like you're going to Target, the dollar store, so on and so forth, you have to buy the box that says for great coverage, like L'Oreal, performing preference, okay? So, uh, and then the last point is, um, make sure that you apply your color meticulously, all right? Don't just rub it all the way through. Make sure you're applying it, you know, in an in a organized fashion, and then you'll have great, great coverage. So I'm gonna come back, and you guys are gonna see the finished results. And she is about, what, 70%, where is it? Yeah, she's about 70% gray. I'm 100%, I'm all white. So some people have some black in there, but I'm pretty, I have some black in it, but to your to the naked eye, it looks all white. All right, so there you have it, it's just that simple. You've got five different types of color. Hair coloring is safe. Make sure you let the cosmetologist know what the color is know. If you have allergies, be prepared to have a professional consultation, all right? And you do that, come with your hair nice and clean, lower your expectations. Gray coverage comes best with proper formulation and if you use a product line that's specifically for gray coverage. And then other than that, I think we've got it covered. How do you think? Did I do a good job? Yes. She said, oh yes. All right guys, so there you have Lunch and Learn with LaDosha. We'll be back with the results. Thank you so very much, and check my book out at lwhitebooks.com or also um, uh, at my Amazon store. It is on sale this month for the big one to five, okay? So for $15, you can check out my book, and uh, I'm gonna go ahead on and share this video. Thank you guys so much. Peace, love, and hair. And if you ain't got no hair, then rub your beautiful bald head because bald heads are beautiful too. See y'all later. You think so? Oh yeah. I found out I got a disorder. You know. <laughs>